Joining us now to discuss the State of the Union address is Mike Leon, Policy and Strategy Director at the Free and Equal Elections Foundation and host of the Can We Please Talk podcast. Mike, welcome back. Great to see you. Now, Biden's, was Biden's message one that will connect with voters, would you say? Oh, good to see you, Steph, as always. You know, um, first off, in that package I just played, I'm glad that, that, that the Marine's father there will get off with just like a small fine or something like that. Because mm -hmm. if you want to attack President Biden, that's one way to do it. Uh, the foreign policy mismatch has, has really cost the Biden administration. But onto his speech real quick. Um, yeah. I thought the speech overall w was pretty good for him. If you look at the way he has been speaking out in public over the last few months when he's done pressers or he's done it from the White House itself, the press conferences, he's gotten a little bit confused. He's he's kind of wandered off track and then the reporters are shouting questions. So he has to come back and try to give an answer. And sometimes I, I've heard from people that are uh, working the administration that they don't want him to go back to the podium to answer that. So I thought yesterday he was composed at times, even with the different uh, shouting matches that happened. And I think the biggest takeaway for me was the president tried to echo this message of bipartisanship and look no further than when he started speaking about the immigration bill. Steph, you and I have spoken about this. The camera panned to Senator James Langford, and we've mentioned this. Senator Langford is extremely conservative. He drafted this bill with Senator Chris Murphy and Kirsten Sinema. They thought this bill would solve and address a lot of the problems that are happening at our U.S. southern border. And President Biden said, let's do something about it instead of waiting for a potential Trump administration. And he even asked the former president to join him in this. I thought that was really interesting and moving. But overall, you know, the speech, I mean, do you want me to give it a letter grade? I mean, I would put it, you know, B minus, something like that. He spoke about some of the, the key issues that voters are talking about in these primaries. And he, as you mentioned about the Senate border bill, you know, it, it was a bipartisan bill, but and yet it did fail in the Senate. And so uh, it's not as though all Democrats were supporting it either, as far as I can tell. Um, right. But, but moving on to the economy, that's another top issue for voters. How would you rate his pitch on the economy and the solutions that he put forward? Well, I mean, again, if, if you're going to go line item by line item and talk about some of the things that he has mentioned, inflation has gone down since he's taken office. But again, when it first started, they were saying it was transitory, some of the issues, as I've heard from members of Congress, and that the messaging was all whacked, right? Like, you have to meet your issues head on and address and acknowledge that they are issues before you're actually able to solve them. In the initial stages, the Biden administration was not dealing with inflation properly. Um, unemployment, he mentioned, was at a 50 year low. That is true. But again, as I've mentioned on other shows across NTD and on our show specifically, job growth in some sectors is is stagnant or declining. You know, and I know we're going to get into Katie Britt's response in a second, but like job growth in certain in certain sectors like healthcare, like government are rising. But if you look in other sectors like media and technology, the ones that we're in, job decline is down. We've seen companies in Silicon Valley make thousands of layoffs from Spotify to Meta. Um, so there are thousands of people that are feeling that that may be not part of that unemployment rate number. So I thought when he spoke about the economic issues, again, he, he reiterated some of the things that his plans have addressed. He talked about the cost of, of drugs and, and, and in terms of um, insulin and what Medicare is doing. So I thought he hit on some of those things. But again, I would encourage people to fact check some of that stuff in real time to see if those numbers are actually factual. And in terms of with voter messaging, like we talked about the other day, Steph, you know, voters go to the gas pump, they see the price, they, they check the price from the year before. They and see their grocery bill, they check the price, they see the price from the year before. It's going up, unfortunately. Right, and, and he has been criticized since his speech for perhaps what some people have said, trivializing the issue of the rising cost of living. You know, in his speech, speaking about the cost of a packet of chips or, you know, as opposed to some right. of the other things that are hitting people more uh, that they can't escape from. They need to buy gas, need to buy food, you know, to put on the table. So there are other costs there. But looking further, we heard earlier just the reporting on the interaction be between Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene. Of course, the border, again, is a big issue. Uh, do you think that that was a, an inflection point or, you know, did that speak to the voters in some way? Who do you think came out on top there? Oh, well, I mean, it's such a, how do I put this? Like, look, what happened with Lake and Riley, if you don't know the story of this University of Georgia student who went jogging and, and her brutal murder, it's, it's absolutely terrible. 
like it's legitimately terrible there's no other way around it and again this person that was in this country illegally committed this act uh, you know marjorie taylor green shining light on it and and some other uh, a gop representatives there that that wore patches uh, kudos to them for doing that now look the statistical data is just not on their side with the amount of uh, immigrants or migrants that are here either waiting asylum trials or here illegally committing crimes right u.s born residents are more than three times likely to commit crimes than than a migrant and that's that's not mike leon saying this this is the university of wisconsin madison study that was put out recently around this issue so i think you can talk about both things while addressing one is a problem like what we saw with lincoln riley how do we address that and president biden again said in his speech Let's do something about the border. This this Senate plan that they had, if we revitalize it, it would put more agents out there for enforcement. It would Certainly. put more uh, judges on the immigration court to be able to deal with some of these issues so we can get the backlog of people that like that person that maybe was in this country illegally. We could get those folks back to their country of origin and they wouldn't be here uh, and- committing crimes like we don't want them to. And certainly, I I wish we could dig into this further. That is such an interesting topic and a really important one right at this moment. But that's all we have time for. Mike Leon, Policy and Strategy Director at the Free and and Equal Elections Foundation. Thank you so much. Thanks, Steph.